I don't think in my last few videos I've stirred up nearly enough controversy. So time to really stoke that fire again by taking about one third of the colleges, putting them in a tier list, ranking them how much I like them. I saw this video done by Sabrina, so do check out her video's version of this. But I've decided to do the tier list into first, they're the first class colleges, 2-1, still pretty good, very, very happy, very respectable degree class. 2-2, two, two, at that point you're really not so sure and you definitely don't want to be in a third class college. So if we go through the colleges, I've obviously put a small picture of them, but also the letter. So T for Trinity, Univ, Brasenose, Exeter, St Hughes, Somerville, Christchurch, not to be confused with Corpus Christi, which is just a 1C, Wadham, and that one there is Worcester, Magdalen, Keeble, Lincoln, St John's, and Oriel. So those are the ones we'll be doing today. One more thing before we start, this is purely for entertainment purposes. If you want to see a bit more of a factual educational video, I put one about how to choose a college before, but please, I hope I don't get sued for libel by any of these colleges. It's just a bit of fun based on whatever I decide they are. So let's start with Trinity. Trinity is my college. And I've talked about good things of Trinity in the past. I've also talked about bad things. But I have to put it in first class because I chose it for a reason. I chose Trinity at the time because I thought it had nice gardens and also I thought it was very well located. Are both of those things still important in the college? I definitely think so. The nice gardens is important because when you wake up every morning and you go to the library, you do want it to look nice. And I think Trinity definitely has a really nice front quad. I know there are quite a few around sort of that Turl Street, High Street area, but Trinity is particularly good because it has three entrances and exits. Of course, you have the main one onto the High Street. Everyone has a main college entrance, but it also has a second college entrance on the back, kind of onto St Giles, which is super close to the Classics faculty. And that's one that I find super useful because it means once I leave Trinity, it's literally less than a minute until I get to my daily Latin class. And we also have another one kind of opposite Wadham, and that's kind of on the way to University Parks. So it feels like Trinity has entrances and exits on three sides of the square, which is super useful. OK, fine, you still have to walk through the college to get to whichever bit you need, but I think that's brilliant. It is a small college. I've talked about that before. Would I have chosen a bigger college in terms of the amount of people per year? Possibly, but I chose Trinity for a reason. I think it was objectively a good pick, so I'm going to put it in first. The next college we're dealing here is U for Univ. University College, I have a few friends that go there. One of them is Sam Oxcentric. Uh, so the last week of last term I went round. That was actually the first time I've been round, but I've invited various other friends from Univ to Trinity and stuff like that. I decided to put this one second because, you know, it you know, creates a bit of controversy. I actually really didn't like Univ very much, I'm sorry to say. I was going round with Sam Oxcentric and it's just so higgledy piggledy, it's so hard to navigate. In Trinity, you have your main quad, your next quad, your next quad. It's like the whole college is in a square, basically. Whereas here, it felt we were always darting in and out, and it was all over the place. And also, I'm not sure it was that beautiful. It just looked like lots of tiny quads surrounded by buildings that aren't even the classic Oxford buildings. So yeah, I mean, I'm sure Univ is a really nice college if you go there. And I know Sabrina, who, like I said, inspired this idea, also goes to Univ. So I'm sorry to put it in 2-2. Hopefully, uh, I still get invited around to Univ in the future. Of course, I wasn't going to put it in third because the moral of the story is no colleges are third class. Every college has its pros. Brasenose is the worst college in Oxford. Why? Brasenose was actually the college I applied to first time and rejected me. And in all seriousness, of course, they were completely fair to reject me. I did not make a good application. I had to work much harder to then make my Trinity application. And so you might be thinking I should give Brazno some credit because that was originally my first college love. I picked that first time because presumably at the time it was my favourite Oxford college. Which is true, but having spent four days interview there, I realised that actually Brazno feels very small. It only has a few quads. The reason I chose it is because I thought it was central, close to the Radcliffe camera, and also overlooked the Radcliffe camera. First of all, the only people that tell you that the centre of Oxford is the Radcliffe camera are the people who go to colleges near the Radcliffe camera, like Brasenose and Univ. And okay, it's f hardly far away anyway. But I think the real centre of Oxford is Oxford Tesco's. So that's where you need to be near to if you want to be central. And number two, actually, once I was only there for four days, it did feel quite cramped and you didn't have the nice greenery or even just different parts of the college in general. It was just kind of one quad, then another quad incredibly similar and another quad. Maybe there were other parts that I wasn't allowed to see because we were only there for interviews. But, you know, also uh, they did reject me. So we've got to have one further video for the clickbait thumbnail to go in uh, third. So that's going to be Bray's notes. Right, next college, Exeter. Exeter is a college directly opposite Trinity. So I see it all the time. 
I have friends at Exeter. I've been to Exeter, they've taken me around. I've taken them around Trinity. Had I not picked Trinity, I really might have picked Exeter, especially having gone round. I think it's beautiful. It's another one of those colleges that is pretty well located. It's opposite Trinity, like I say, so it's still on the high street. Of course, it's on the other side of the high street, which means you don't really get the sort of St Giles side and the back other side. It's kind of towards the Turl Street and Radcam side, which, as I'm telling you, is further away from the Tesco. It's not closer, it's further away from the centre. But it's just a very nice middling college. You don't want one too pretentious, probably too big, nice and central, slightly under the radar, which can only be a good thing. But the thing that really clinches it is that bit of Exeter where it shares a wall with the Bodleian Library, which is a super big, lovely library in Oxford, which I think is really cool. And then you pan round and you can actually see the Radcliffe camera properly. It has a lovely garden, steps up to a bit, and it just overlooks the Radcliffe camera. That's so amazing all the time. But we first saw that on matriculation, which is this day at the start where Oxford students have this formal induction to the university and everyone sort of hangs around the Radcliffe camera. And all the Exeter people were just sitting in their little bit of the college overlooking it. We were like, how do you even get up there? What part is that? And then I realised that was Exeter College. And that's honestly the coolest. Um, so yeah, I definitely have to give good marks to Exeter. Not as good as Trinity, because I think practically the library, I think they're redoing it a bit. Trinity has this lovely new library, amazing space called the Levine Centre, which changes everything because there are old parts and it also feels very fresh and modern, which I don't think Exeter has, but it's going to be a very strong 2-1. And I think Exeter is a brilliant college. Let's move on now to the next college, St Hughes. And I know I've been talking about joking, oh, Radcliffe camera is not the centre of Oxford, but all of that is within still a five minute radius walking wherever. If you go to Hughes, you are pretty far out the centre. This is probably 20 minutes away. Although in third and fourth year in Trinity, you actually have to live kind of on that road there anyway. So I'm sure I'll be seeing more of that part of Oxford at some point in the future, if I make it as far as third and fourth year, which hopefully I do, but you can never be too sure. Once you get these fringe colleges, and these really are fringe colleges at that point, um, it is a very different vibe for a few reasons. Number one, you simply are very far away from kind of central Oxford. So if you need to pop to Tesco's and all this kind of stuff, which I do joke about, it's just not practical, it's just not possible, which is a bit of a shame. I'm sure there are some shops up there and maybe they get sort of food deliveries, but it's just, you are far out. But some people like this because it creates a real feeling in the college that you are all one college together. I know Hughes has a lot of clubs just for the college. So you know, they have a creative writing club or whatever club it is. And that sounds really fun because we don't get that in Trinity. I've talked about, I don't feel there's a sort of Trinity spirit where the whole year is united. But I think you do get that in some of the far away colleges because they simply can't just pop into their friends at Exeter or at Brazenose or at Univ without it becoming like a whole ordeal of having to walk 20 minutes there. Saying that, I think, to be honest, that is what people say to just sort of sweeten the fact that they go to Hughes. And, uh, and a lot of the people I know who go to Hughes didn't actually apply there, or at least it wasn't their first choice. However, you know, you get what I'm saying. So I'm afraid St Hughes, although it is super nice once you go there, I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it in 2-2. After St Hughes, I put Somerville, because once I went round Somerville, it kind of reminded me of a Hughes, but near the centre. Somerville is probably five, ten minutes away from Trinity. I think kind of towards the Hughes way anyway, actually. But this is a college I didn't know much about. I didn't really research it beforehand. But actually, if everyone else has also not researched it, I think it's underrated. I think it goes under the radar. Central enough, really nice gardens and kind of big buildings, but plenty of grassy areas around, which I believe you could also walk on the grass. So it, it has this kind of St Hughes atmosphere, but it's near the centre. So yeah, not much to say about Somerville, but I actually really do like Somerville, and I'm going to put it in 2-1. Christchurch. Christchurch is a college I have been around a bit so far. I have a friend at Christchurch, you might have heard of her, she's called Lucy Wang. Um, <laughs> and this is the Oxford College. I think if you go to Cambridge and you look at sort of, probably Trinity College Cambridge is the, is the Cambridge College. I think without a doubt, the Oxford version is Christchurch. It's had like 17 prime ministers or something, so it's steeped in that kind of history. It's where a lot of Harry Potter was filmed, like the dining hall, the stairs might be Mrs. McGonagall's stairs or something. One underrated part of the college is the no-peel graffiti, which with my A-level history I try and explain to everyone who I see at Christchurch what it is and no one seems to care. But that I think is super cool. It also has a bit of the River Thames. I think it starts off as the River Isis in larger Christchurch and then it flows all the way down to the River Thames, which I think is cool. I mean, if you go to Christchurch, you're applying to Christchurch for a reason. 
you kind of know the reputation and maybe you want to go to that Oxford College. You don't want to be under the radar. You want to go to Christchurch. But, you know, it is the college to go to, as it were. So I have to put it in, in, in the first tier. Next, we have Wooden, which I would say the stereotype of the ethos of the college is probably as opposite to Christchurch as you can get. Wadham is opposite Trinity. I have a friend at Wadham, so I've been there quite a few times, and we have, as I call it, the Wadham exit, because the exit of Trinity is literally off the road next to Wadham. So I have been there a few times. I think Wadham is good. They also seem to have a really nice atmosphere there, which in my opinion is rare for the central colleges, and they have stuff like kind of garden club or something like that, because they have some nice trees and kind of plants. So I think it's the chaplain, the sort of chapel, chaplain kind of minister, um, every however often has a club and they go around looking at a different type of plant and that's kind of a wholesome kind of thing. They also have a college pet, which I met. I don't think I looked at Wadden too much, but to be honest, I think it's nice. And they also have a modern building, which is really good. So that kind of, I do think, creates a nice mix of old and new of the college. And so I would say that is definitely a 2-1 college to go to. Magdalen's the next college which is also slightly outside of Oxford. It's near Magdalen Bridge, which is a bit not very central, but I think it definitely makes up for it in Magdalen's architecture and gardens and beauty. Of course, they have Magdalen Deer Park with real life deer, which is amazing, but this is a beautiful, beautiful college. And if you go to Magdalen, you've done something very well. It's huge and every, every quad does feel different to the next one. And they all feel very Oxfordy and old. You've got the cloisters there. You basically have everything you can want in a college. They have a few practical options for food as well. You know, as well as a dining hall, they have kind of little cafes and stuff like that. I think even the punts from kind of the river that you can punt on goes through Magdalen, or at least next to it so you can see it. Absolutely beautiful college. And even the fact it's far out doesn't mean it's anything less than a first class college. So uh, yeah, beautiful college, Magdalen. Let's actually go for Corpus Christi next. I just feel like doing that one. I went round to Corpus with people from Corpus Cambridge, yeah. as a matter of fact, because Corpus Oxford and Corpus Cambridge were having a kind of sports day event together. I had a friend from Corpus Cambridge who texted me because he was coming to Oxford. And then because he was being hosted in Corpus Oxford, I went and saw the college he was being put up in. Corpus is a small college. And if you go around to the back, it's very nice. And you know, you can see over to Merton, I think in Christchurch. But I saw absolutely nothing particularly special that would make you want to ever apply to Corpus. It's a weird part of Oxford that I don't feel I go down much. It's kind of where Merton is and Corpus, like I said. But you kind of go, and where you would turn left to Magdalen and Univ and stuff like that, you just go straight. So there are basically a few parallel roads in Oxford. And instead of going onto the next parallel road and walking down it parallelly, you kind of go even further. And then there are just sort of a few colleges out there. And every time I go to one of those colleges, Merton, Corpus, I feel like I'm really going to somewhere I never go in Oxford. Um, and that's obviously because I'm on the other side, but I feel, you know, the high street's where it's at, or at least the next parallel road, or at least you're on a road where you see shops, not a random little Oxford kind of street. But maybe that's what some people like, the fact that you feel you're going down this cobbly little road and you get to your college corpus. But yeah, I'm afraid, um, corpus, I'm not seeing much to it. I'm gonna have to put it in 2-2. Let's do Oriel as well next to it because Oriel is very similar, I've just talked about it in the same breath, very similarly located. Again, nice enough college, but I just think with that in mind, why would you apply to Oriel over something like Wadham, Trinity, Exeter? I just wonder why people do choose Oriel particularly. There's obviously that stereotype of Oriel being Tory, so it's Toriel. I don't know how true that is either way, but I do find it slightly weird that people would go out of their way to particularly pick Oriel. Mm. But Oriel is definitely one of the colleges that when you introduce yourself as going to Oriel, you get a reaction, just like you do from Christchurch. Because in my head, there's a reputation that precedes the college that when you apply there, whether you agree with it or not, or that's you know part of you, you know what you're getting yourself into. So I always find it a bit weird when people apply there, maybe. So uh, I'm just gonna put it in 2-2 as well, you know. Keeble. Keeble is a nice college. It's kind of upwards, I would say, near University Park. That's kind of how I view it in my head. I would go out the Wadham exit and then turn left up to Keeble. I've been to Keeble a few times. They've got a few parts of the college that are on different parts of the road and stuff, as a few colleges do, and I've been to most of them. I've been to the central Keeble site, which I actually think is really beautiful. There's a separate site that I've gone to for one of the clubs as well that I go to. But I think Keeble is a really solid college. Again, for me, because I was just applying and I didn't know how to kind of narrow down the colleges, I mostly just looked at the colleges right in the kind of nucleus centre. But Keeble is, you know, five minutes away. It's hardly outside the centre at all. But I just basically never considered it. Would I have picked it over Trinity? Probably not. 
But I think it's a really, really nice college. And uh, yeah, 2 1 definitely. If you go to Keeble, good college choice. Okay, the next one's Lincoln, and Lincoln is a hard one. Lincoln is very small on its main site. It's probably the same size as Brazenose. They're very, very almost claustrophobic in a way for me. But it seems to have much a bigger year than, for example, Trinity, which maybe makes it feel even more claustrophobic. I think they have roughly 120 in their year, maybe something like that. I'm not too sure, but Trinity has way closer to something like 80. Really, really small. And I think for Lincoln, I would be putting it in the 2-2 kind of bracket. But some of the stuff they have associated with their college is amazing. For example, the Lincoln Library, which is not actually in Lincoln's main site, is beautiful. In my opinion, it's the nicest library in Oxford. It's super impressive from the outside, and it looks like it's gonna be huge. But once you actually come inside, um, it's actually very small. So people from Lincoln, I think, call it the reverse TARDIS. But it's so nice in there, beautifully grand. I don't know if I'm, uh, <laughs> if I'm exposing myself because I'm not supposed to have been in Lincoln Library because I'm not a member of Lincoln. I don't know if that's allowed or not. I obviously went in with someone from Lincoln, but we studied there, but we met up, and actually afterwards we came back and studied, which I think is a very Oxford thing to do. We're probably there at like, you know, 12, 30 at night, we studied from it in Lincoln Library. But it was beautiful, absolutely amazing. And that is the kind of thing that takes the college from a 2-2 to the next bracket up. Another good thing about Lincoln is you don't live on site for the whole time. So you live in college-owned accommodation that isn't in its main site. But whilst Trinity ship you off all the way to the north of Oxford, really far out near St Hughes, Lincoln seems to have a lot, if not all of its college accommodation, I'm not too sure, still in the center, which is amazing. So if I have friends, if for example, second year at Lincoln, second year Lincoln is a year that you don't live on site, they still live super close in the center, which is not to be sniffed at, because I think in third and fourth year at Trinity, maybe it's coming down with, you know, how far it is. But yeah, Lincoln, I think all of those kind of things outside of the main site that just comes with Lincoln College in general, takes it to a 2-1 college. Two colleges left, St John's and Worcester, which are both also very famous Oxford colleges. St John's is known as being the richest Oxford college, has the most grants, has something like a million pounds worth of assets per student living on site or something, if you divide it all up. And I have been around St John's, I have a few friends there. Of course it borders Trinity, Trinity is Bailey on one side and St John's on the other side. So you know, the little small baby brother in between two big colleges either side. But I think St John's is slightly overrated. People go on about how it's huge and it's rich and it must be so amazing. But I think, actually, if you were to live in St John's, probably not for me. The year seems really big, so you don't get to know everyone, which I think might be weird. The college in general is just huge, so it feels like, not that you can get lost, but just maybe it doesn't feel that homely because you always just feel there's more to it. And I guess you'll just stick in some parts of the college and never go to other parts, depending on where your room is and the library or whatever. But I think that's weird. You do live on site for all the years, which I think might be good. And again, if I did this tier list in a few years' time, maybe that would push it right up. But to be a bit controversial, I think I'm actually going to put John's in the 2-2 range. I think, especially based on its reputation compared to reality, I think people often, or at least I hear John's people talking about how it's an amazing college. And I think when it's a bit okay after that, maybe it pushes it down. You know, I'm sure it's maybe no worse than Wooden, but I don't hear Wooden being so rated. So I think once you actually go and discover it's really nice, it's higher. John's maybe its reputation means that it's a bit of a letdown. And finally Worcester. If you talk to a Worcester person, you immediately know they're from Worcester because they tell you they apply to Worcester, Worcester's the hardest college to get into, Worcester's the most beautiful college, Worcester's this, Worcester's that, all you hear about is Worcester, Worcester. And when I originally went around Oxford, I had in my head for some reason that Worcester was really far away from the centre. But actually it's literally one road away from Trinity again. Very central. Worcester simply has to be overrated because it is so highly rated. Like, it would be impossible for this to be fairly rated or underrated because of how much Worcester and everyone else talks about how amazing Worcester is. And again, all these things that people throw at you, probably eventually, it's just not very practical. So Worcester people love to talk about how Worcester has a lake, how amazing is that? And then you speak to some of the third years at Worcester and they're like, I've not gone to the lake since second term of first year. <laughs> you know, it doesn't make a difference to a college like that. Worcester accommodation is not all always on the main site, but all the people I know from Worcester living out are close anyway. So again, they're not pushed out like Trinity are. And it is a super beautiful college. But I guess if I've ranked John's down because of its reputation, simply can't live up to what you expect Worcester to be. Even though it is a super nice college, I think I'm going to have to put it in 2-1. Still really nice, but you know, maybe that's just me projecting the fact that I don't go to Worcester and I can't give it its due praise and put it in first. I have to, you know, have a chip on my shoulder and put it in 2-1. But there we go. I think that's a decently done tier list. We have a bit of, you know, normal distribution more or less going on. But yeah, to recap, Trinity, I do think objectively it was a great pick. 
Christchurch and Maudlin speak for themselves. 2-1, still amazing colleges. If you go to any of these, you're doing very well. And if I couldn't go to Trinity, I would more than happily go to any of these colleges. 2-2, I mean, they're fine. But, you know, I would say, personally for me, I'd be slightly miffed compared to the other amazing Oxford colleges has to offer. These ones, which are still obviously super nice, just not personally my taste. And let's not even talk about um, this category here. But there we go, that's this video. I hope you did enjoy. I'm upset that YouTube has hid the dislike out because I would like to know how many people go to Brazenose that watch my videos. Let me know if you want a part two. We've got plenty of other colleges to talk about. New College, Balliol College, a lot of the Saints, St Anne's, St Cats. Loads to talk about. So if you want a part two, do let me know. If you want to see another similar video about colleges, but slightly more informational, click here. But apart from that, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.